from Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, demonstrations continue in Egypt, counting the votes in Mali's runoff election. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. Thousands of supporters of ousted Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi continued ongoing vigil into the late hours of Sunday despite warnings that authorities would step take steps, that is, to empty out two pro-Morsi sit-ins in Cairo. Densely packed camps of pro-Morsi supporters are the main flashpoints in the confrontation between the army, which toppled Mr. Morsi last month, and Morsi's supporters, Western and Arab mediators, and some senior Egyptian officials have been saying that they're trying to persuade the army to avoid using force against the protesters, who at times can number in the tens of thousands. Egyptian officials say the military has carried out airstrikes on militant targets in the Sinai Peninsula, killing at least 12 fighters in response to an escalation of violence in the area. Salamis fighters and tribesmen have intensified attacks on Egyptian security forces in Sinai since the Morsi ouster on July the 3rd. Militants have used the peninsula for smuggling and cross-border attacks on Israel for years. An Egyptian military spokesperson denied a militant's group claim that an Israeli drone was responsible for an airstrike that killed four of its members on Friday. Poll workers in Mali began counting votes in Sunday's presidential runoff, with former Prime Minister Ibrahim Boubacar Keita expected to claim the job of stabilizing Mali after more than a year of turmoil. Voting took place at some 21,000 polling locations across the country, from the south, home to 90% of Mali's 16 million people, to northern cities of Timbuktu and Gao, where Islamists imposed Sharia law. Tagolo Chikoro is an election observer. Dieu merci. Depuis le matin jusqu'à la dra- jusqu'à cette heure-ci, on est là, tout se passe très bien. He said everything went well, even though police did arrest some voting office officials for fraud. Final results expected in two or three days with the Constitutional Court requiring that they have them certified by Friday. In a statement issued Sunday, the office of South African President Jacob Zuma said 95-year-old former President Elsa Mandela is making slow but steady progress, but remains in critical condition in a Pretoria hospital, where he's been for more than two months because of a recurring lung infection. Mr. Mandela's youngest daughter says her father has been able to sit up by himself, South African government has released few details about Mr. Mandela's illness, citing privacy concerns. Many South Africans see him as the father of their nation and have been praying for his recovery. Also in the news, Israel is inviting contractors to build some 1,200 new homes in occupied territories claimed by the Palestinians, Controversial move comes three days before Israeli-Palestinian peace talks are set to resume in Israel. Officials in Yemen say suspected al-Qaeda militants have attacked a natural gas terminal, killing five soldiers. Attacks come after a series of U.S. drone strikes in the past two weeks that have killed militants in Yemen. U.S. lawmakers continue to slam Russia over Moscow's decision to grant temporary asylum to former federal contractor and surveillance program leaker Edward Snowden. VOA's Michael Bowman reports. Sunday, American lawmakers took to the airwaves to heap scorn on the Russian government and in particular President Vladimir Putin. Republican Senator John McCain spoke on the Fox News Sunday television program. He's an old KGB colonel 
that has no illusions about our relationship, does not care about a relationship with the United States, continues to oppress his people, continues to oppress the media, and continue to act in an autocratic and unhelpful fashion. McCain said the Snowden episode signals, quote, incredibly bad relations between the United States and Russia, adding that President Putin has, quote, put his thumb right in America's eye. Michael Bowman, VOA News, Washington. American popular music star Edie Gourmet, whose 60-year partnership with husband Steve Lawrence made them top nightclub and TV stars, has died at the age of 84. During her career, she had her own program on The Voice of America called A Date with Edie.